We'll just use a spreadsheet for initial calculations. So, you know, uh, basically what we want to do is we want to tune the wheel rate, okay? Uh, so when I have to tune my wheel rate, I need to find what is the actual spring stiffness that I need to use in the vehicle. Okay, so let's go back to our instruments. Let's see what is the default spring stiffness that we have. Okay. So this is seen over here. What you see is that for 10 mm of deflection, the spring gives a force of 1250 Newtons. Okay, so for 10 mm of deflection, I have a force of 1 to 5 0, right? So that basically means that my spring stiffness stiffness becomes equal to 1 to 5 0 divided by 10, right? So the spring stiffness here is 125 Newton per mm, okay? Uh, so these are the Adams values. So this is input data. Okay. So if from the spring stiffness, if I would like to find what is the wheel rate, okay, what I require is another parameter called as motion ratio, right? And you know, for simple, so basically, what is the motion ratio? It is the, uh, it is the the spring displacement divided by the wheel displacement, right? In other words, how we generally calculate motion ratio for simple mechanisms is, you know, this length, that is the length from the pivot to the strut bottom and divided by the length from the pivot to the lower ball joint, right? So let's see the coordinates or the Y coordinates of this. So what we are looking at is the Y coordinate of the bush location, right? Which is at 400, okay? So let's just keep putting the data over here. So we have the MCA pivot Y at 400, again, mm. Where is the strut bottom? So if you see the Y coordinate of this, it is at 600 mm. All right, so we have the strut bottom Y at 600, again, mm. And we have the lower ball joint, right? Let's see where this is at. This is at 750 mm, right? So this is the lower ball joint, I'll just say LBJ, okay, which is at 750. Again, mm. Okay, so from this data, we generally calculate our motion ratio. Right now, what I'm showing you is the theoretical method of how we generally do it. Right, so the motion ratio becomes this minus. Uh, wait a second. It is the lower pivot. It is the strut bottom minus the pivot divided by the LBJ minus the pivot, right? So you have a motion ratio of uh, 0.571, right? So this becomes equal to this. So if I have my spring stiffness and motion ratio, I should be able to get my wheel rate, right? So let's see this. So what is the wheel rate equal to? The wheel rate would be equal to the spring stiffness into motion ratio the squared, right? Oh. Newton per mm. So from our theoretical calculations, we are expecting a wheel rate of close to 41 Newton per mm, okay? So this is a very basic calculation, okay? Now, let's see what is the actual motion ratio. Let's see what is the actual wheel rate that we actually have, okay? 
Okay. So to calculate the wheel rate, one of the uh, you know the easiest way to do it is to do a parallel wheel travel test, which is one of the KNC simulations. So we directly go to suspension and so so we are going to we are going into the simulation part of it now. So we're going to simulate suspension analysis and parallel wheel travel. As you can see, there are a variety of tests that you can do. Uh, Right now, let me do the most basic of the test. This is a parallel wheel travel. Okay. So. Hey, wait. Yeah. So uh, there are a couple of questions. Do you want to take the questions now or do you want to show something and then take the questions? Uh, let me just finish this and then we can take the questions sure. in this yeah. part, like maybe five minutes. Okay. Okay. So let's just find the wheel rate. Let's do a small simulation, maybe 30 steps. So we need to specify the bump travel. Let's keep it at 15 mm in bump and minus 15 in rebound, just for simplicity. So this is the post-processing window of atoms where we can where we can see all the results basically. So if I need to find the wheel rate, what you are looking at is the travel or the wheel travel. This is it. So on the x-axis, let's have the wheel travel, and on the y-axis, let's have the tire force. Right. And not have the tire force, let's have the hub force, which is at the wheel center, right? Yes, so let's see the left wheel force, the normal force. Okay. So what we have here is this is basically the wheel travel. So on the x-axis we have the wheel travel and on the y-axis we have the hub force or the wheel center force and the slope of this graph gives us the wheel rate. As you can see it's quite linear. What you're looking at, uh, at is the dy by dx which is 55.53. Uh, just uh, you're, you're supposed to be looking over here. Um, so you're supposed to be looking in this area over here. You basically have to calculate the slope. Sorry. So you're supposed to be looking at the slope of this line, which says 55.336. Okay. So this is the actual force or this is the actual wheel rate of your suspension, okay? And from theory, we found that the wheel rate was around 40 mm, uh, which was around 41 Newton per mm, okay? So what could be the reasons for this? Uh, do you guys have any idea? Why is there a difference between the theoretical method and uh, the what, what Adams is giving? So there is a difference of around 15, right? 15 divided by this. So there's a difference of around 36% between the results of atoms and this. What could be the reason for this? If you have a response, uh, could you type into the chat box? Can you ask that question? Oh, okay, I think Jay Prakash, is saying, uh, I, I think the difference yeah. is due to the approximation method. Absolutely, you know, because uh, we have various approximations in our, uh, in the theoretical method, 
that we have so yeah the motion ratio is very approximated what we calculate the motion the formula that we use for motion ratio is for a straight line okay um, is is for a straight link basically okay um, whereas as you can see in the model over here you know as you can see in the model over here the link is not straight the lower link the red color link it's inclined and it becomes even more inclined as it moves uh, upwards and downwards okay so one of the major approximations in our method is the approximation of motion ratio okay let's just look at what is the actual motion ratio in the vehicle so the motion ratio is nothing but the spring deflection so let's see the spring deflection so in spring you can see the displacement right so you have the spring displacement versus wheel travel and again you're looking at the slope so if you look at the slope it is 0 0.506 okay the slope is 0 0.506 okay so and what we saw over here is that we calculated a motion ratio of 0.571 so the actual motion ratio is lesser than uh, the motion ratio that we calculated via simplistic methods so that is one error what could be the other error any other uh, any other errors so because what what is happening is just let's just go back to our excel sheet over here in this if we say put 0 0.50 i think it was 7 right so our mole, it's becoming even worse actually now. <laughs> so what could be the reason? Uh, you know, is there any other error in our uh, uh, theoretical method? So um, another okay, I have an answer I think because of steady state conditions. No, this is a quasi-static maneuver. You know, uh, so it's almost at equilibrium. It is equilibrium. I have a doubt if we have push rod actuation. Oh my God, that is later, okay. So, um, uh, one of the major things that we miss out when we are calculating the wheel rate is the bush stiffnesses, you know. And so, all the bushes that you are seeing, uh, all these bushes which are attached to the lower control arm or the upper control arm, these bushes have a certain stiffness which impede the motion of the wheel, okay? So these bushes, these bush stiffnesses are giving a certain amount of stiffness to the wheel travel, okay? And they contribute to the wheel travel to a good, to a good percentage, which we generally ignore during our uh, computations, right? So if you just see, how much is the force which is coming into the bushes? You can see that in the post processor. Oh, let's just plot that. Oh, if you see the, you know, what is it? So this is the NCF front bush. So in the, in the post processor, you can see what is the force on the LCA front and the rear. What I'm interested uh, to see is the moment or the TZ moment, which is the rotational moment. So as you see over here, there is a significant amount of moment. It is 50,000, is it? Or five lakhs. So it is around 50,000 Newton per hour or 50 Newton per meter. This is the amount of moment or this is the amount of resistance that your uh, lower uh, control arm bush is giving, okay? Similarly, you can see the moment of your upper control arm, uh, you know, which is, which will be called as the UCA. So in your UCA, you have, you can see the forces again, and you see that your UCA is taking much lesser amount of uh, moment in the z direction which is just around 1500 so you know your bushes are contributing towards the wheel rate 
which we miss during our actual uh, computation, right? Uh, so basically, Adams gives you a more precise results uh, with, uh, you know, as it takes into account all the non-linearities that is happening into the system, right? So this is, so this is the case of wheel rate of how we can tune our wheel rate. So right now we have a wheel rate of say around uh, 55 Newton per mm. And we, if we have a target of say uh, 40 uh, Newton per mm, then we can tune our spring stiffness uh, and we can find the exact amount of spring stiffness that is required uh, to get a wheel rate of around say 40 Newton per mm. Or you can tune uh, your bush stiffnesses as well. But generally, it is advised to tune the spring stiffness.